In this lesson, we're going to learn how to factor a quadratic trinomial that also has a greatest common factor. Let's begin by looking at an example. We want to factor the expression 6x squared minus 4x minus 16 completely. When you see the directions to factor completely, it means that you may have to employ more than one method. In this case, you'll employ the greatest common factor, and then we'll factor the trinomial that results. Let's look at our three terms, 6x squared minus 4x minus 16. Is there a number that divides all three of those terms evenly? Yes, there is. That factor is 2. So, we now have 2 times 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. And what's left in the parentheses is a trinomial that we can factor using the grid. We draw our grid and we're going to look at the numbers inside the parentheses only. That 2 on the outside, I'll save that until the end. We have 3x squared that goes in the upper left hand box. We have minus 8 that goes in the lower right hand box. And now we need to figure out what the two numbers are that go in the other two boxes in the grid. We look at the 3 and the negative 8 and multiply them together. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. We'd need numbers that multiply to negative 24. We look at the number in the middle, negative 2. We need numbers that add to negative 2. Numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2. We begin by listing the numbers that multiply to negative 24. 1 times negative 24, negative 1 times positive 24, 2 times negative 12, negative 2 times positive 12, 3 times negative 8, negative 3 times positive 8, 4 times negative 6, negative 4 times positive 6. These are all the numbers that multiply to negative 24, which pair adds to negative 2, 4 and negative 6. We will put those numbers, 4 and negative 6, in the remaining two boxes in the grid. We'll also attach the variable x to them. It doesn't matter which box you put the 4x and which box you put the negative 6x, in the end it will all work out the same. Now we look across the top. We look for the greatest common factor of 3x squared and 4x. The greatest common factor is simply x. Now we use multiplication to fill in the other spots along the grid. x times something is 3x squared. x times what is 3x squared? x times 3x. x times something is 4x. x times what is 4x? x times 4. And now 3x times something is negative 6x. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. And we can double check 4 times negative 2 to verify that it matches the last number in the grid, which is negative 8. Our factors are 3x plus 4 and x minus 2. Don't forget to bring down the 2 that was the greatest common factor in the beginning. And now we have factored the polynomial completely. Here's one for you to try. Can you factor 9x squared plus 15x plus 6 completely? First look for the greatest common factor, factor it out, and then factor the resulting trinomial using the grid. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check. Let's see how you did. We began by factoring out the greatest common factor, which is 3. When we factor out a 3, we're left with 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 in the parentheses. Now we have a trinomial in the parentheses that we can factor using the grid. So we draw the grid on our page and we begin filling it in. We put the 3x squared in the upper left spot and the plus 2 in the bottom right spot. We then need to find the numbers that fill in the rest of the positions in the grid. We take the 3 times the 2 and multiply them together to get 6. We need numbers that multiply to 6. The number in the middle is 5. We need numbers that add to 5. Numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. Possible candidates that multiply to 6 are 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. Also their negative counterparts. Which pair adds to 5? 2 and 3. In the grid we'll put the 2x and the 3x. 
Now we factor across the top. What is the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor of 3x squared and 2x is x. We then use multiplication to fill in around the grid. x times something is 3x squared. x times what is 3x squared? x times 3x. x times something is 2x. x times what is 2x? x times 2. And finally, 3x times something equals 3x. 3x times what is 3x? 3x times 1. And now we verify the last two numbers. 2 times 1 equals 2, which is the last number in the grid. My factors are 3x plus 2 times x plus 1. Don't forget the greatest common factor from the beginning of the problem, 3. And now we have factored the polynomial completely. A common question that I am asked is this. What if I forget to take out the greatest common factor first? In the problem that we just did, you started by factoring out a 3. But what if you did not factor out the 3? What would happen? Well, let's take a look. If we take 9x squared plus 15x plus 6 and we factor it completely, we came up in our last exercise with 3 times 3x plus 2 times x plus 1. Let's see what happens if we don't factor out the greatest common factor first. We begin by drawing the grid. We would put the 9x squared and the plus 6 inside of the grid. And then we need to find the numbers that fill in the other spots. 9 times 6 is 54, numbers that multiply to 54. The number in the middle is 15, so we need numbers that add to 15. We then look at the numbers that multiply to 54. 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 18, 6 times 9, and the negative counterparts that go with it. Which pair of those numbers add to 15? 6 and 9. So I put the 6x and the 9x in the grid. And now I proceed as I normally do. I look across the top for the greatest common factor, 9x squared and 6x, which is 3x. I then use multiplication to fill in the other positions around the grid. 3x times something is 9x squared. That number is 3x. 3x times something is 6x. That number is 2. And 3x times something is 9x. That number is 3. And so I have my factors 3x plus 3 and 3x plus 2. But notice the first factor here has a greatest common factor. Both of those terms are divisible by 3, and so I could factor out a 3, and I have left in the parentheses an x plus 1. Bring down the 3x plus 2, and I've now factored completely. And notice that I have an equivalent answer to the one that I got in the previous problem. They do look slightly different because I have the x plus 1 at the end in the original problem and the x plus 1 in the middle in the problem I just did, but the commutative property of multiplication allows the factors to be written in any order. So the moral of the story is this. It's always best to take out the greatest common factor first. It makes the problem a little bit easier. But if you don't take out the greatest common factor first, there will be a common factor in one of your binomials that you'll have to factor out. Another common question that I'm often asked is, can I use my graphing calculator to find the greatest common factor for three numbers? You recall previously I showed you that you could use the GCD feature, greatest common divisor, to find the greatest common factor for two numbers. It doesn't quite work the same for three numbers, so I'll show you how you can do that. Suppose we want to factor 12x squared minus 24x minus 63. I want to know first what the greatest common factor is, and perhaps you can do that in your head or you can figure it out on paper, and I think that's fine, but maybe you're having difficulty coming up with that and you want to use your graphing calculator. If you use the TI Inspire, you can do this two numbers at a time. We start with the first two numbers, 12 and 24, and in the calculator, we will calculate the GCD of 12 and 24. I type that right into the calculator and I find out that the greatest common factor of 12 and 24 is the number 12. I now will bring down the third number, which is 63, and I'll do the GCD of 12 and 63. Again, I go to my calculator and type in GCD of 12 and 63, and I get the result of 3. 
That's the greatest common factor of 12, 24, and 63. Therefore, the greatest common factor when I factor the trinomial will be 3. From here, I'd like for you to continue this problem. You now know that the greatest common factor is 3. Factor that out, and then use the grid to factor the quadratic trinomial. Please pause the video here, and come back when you've finished. Okay, let's see how you did. We began by factoring out the common factor of 3. That left us with 4x squared minus 8x minus 21 in the parentheses. I then drew the grid. The 4x squared goes in the upper left box, and the minus 21 in the lower right box. We now need to find the numbers that go into the other boxes. We take 4 times negative 21. We need numbers that multiply to negative 84. The middle number is negative 8, so those numbers need to add to negative 8. I list out the numbers that multiply to negative 84, and I look for the pair that adds to negative 8, 6 and negative 14. So in those boxes, I'll put the 6 and the negative 14 with the variable x attached. Now I factor out across the top. The greatest common factor of 4x squared and 6x is 2x. I'll now use multiplication to fill in the other spots around the grid. 2x times something is 4x squared. 2x times 2x. 2x times something is 6x. 2x times 3. 2x times something is negative 14x, negative 7. And then I check, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. I found my factors. My binomials are 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 7, don't forget to write the greatest common factor of 3 out front, and now you have factored completely. Now you know everything you need to in order to factor a quadratic trinomial that also has a greatest common factor. Remember, you can find more information about factoring trinomials in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.